So, Gloria, first, can you just tell us the problem that you were facing um, and for how long you were having that problem? I dealt with hypothyroidism, um, and I probably dealt with it probably most of my whole life, but it was diagnosed about 20 years ago. So we know that you have a wonderful testimony to share with us. So can you just uh, start from how you started receiving healing and then just go from there? Well, first I'd like to explain, if those of you that don't know what hypothyroidism is, what happens to your body. So for one thing, I was cold all the time. And we're not talking just woman cold. It's just cold, freezing all the time. And so it makes you very anxious then and you're very tense. Um, also, you're very tired. You just get exhausted. And all of a sudden, you're completely exhausted. Uh, for me, my skin got dry. Um, and also, um, your metabolism slows down. So you start, it's easier to gain weight. And you feel like a slug. And probably the worst thing that happens to you when you have hypothyroidism, which means your metabolism is not, your thyroid's not working properly, it's moving really slow, is that you have constipation. Not very fun to talk about. But that is actually a very dangerous thing. Um, so they did a test on me, and they said, um, when you eat a meal, it should leave your body in 12 hours. It was leaving my body in 96 hours. That, to me, is an open door to colon cancer. And I was drinking tons of water. I was taking fiber. Anyone that knows me know I ate more fruits and vegetables than probably anybody. I was doing everything I knew to do to, in the natural, to be obedient, to take care of my body and it wasn't helping, so it was very frustrating. So what happened then, you said you were dealing with this for about, you got diagnosed about 20 years ago, these were the problems that you were suffering with. So how did you uh, begin to receive that healing? Well, the first thing was that I knew that God's will was for me to be healed. And that's something you, ha you have to have as a baseless line. But, and so I would start to confess, my thyroid is strong, my thyroid is strong in the Lord, and then the power of his might. I would confess healing, and I would um, speak to my thyroid, and I would do all these different things, which is great. However, um, then I decided, you know, I'm going to take it in my own hands. I started taking this natural thyroid, um, and with a natural thyroid, I thought, this is good, at least it's natural. And then I thought, you know, though almost kind of I'm going to force God's hands. I'm going to stop taking it. I'm just going to still confess and believe. Well, I started gaining weight, <laughs> having more issues and all of that, and I was frustrated because I'm standing in faith. And so finally after about a year, I um, went back to the doctor. She's, why did you get off this? What are you doing? Well, you know, and she's a Christian but doesn't really understand what it's doing. So I said, God, what is it? Because I've seen God move instant healing. I love instant healing. But sometimes there's strongholds, there's things in our life that are, is keeping a sickness and disease in our body. And I didn't really understand that piece. So as I'm praying, saying, God, what is that? Because I've always wanted to see healing in my life and healing in others. And why are people not receiving healing? So about 10 years ago, um, the Lord brought this man to our town here in Tri-Cities, and his name was Art Matthias. And he did a teaching here um, at one of the local churches, and it was a turning point in my life regarding healing. And he talked about the emotional and the root causes of disease and how sometimes we have bitterness, hatred, um, we are harboring things, and it locates in our body, and we start to experience sickness and disease. And so um, through that conference and learning how to pray for people and things like that, I started saying, okay, I want to receive healing for my thyroid. So I looked up what thyroid, what the root things were. So um, was self-hatred, guilt, fear, and anxiety. So I said, Holy Spirit, where are those areas of self-hatred where I just never can forgive myself? Um, the fear, where do I get anxious and all that. And the Holy Spirit started showing me in my own personal prayer life, different areas, started setting me free, and that's really great. And then, so I was feeling better in many areas, but my thyroid wasn't changed. And about six years ago, the Lord told me, he says, you really like to do a lot of stuff, you and God, and not ask for anybody's help. He says, I want you to humble yourself. 
and I want you to go to a Christian counselor, and I want, you're going to discover some things that you didn't know about. And I was like, but God, I just want to do it, you and me. And God was like, no, you're going to humble yourself. You're going to go get some counseling. And I said, but I don't know who to go to. And the Lord says, I'll show you. So I started, I asked him, and I pulled up the phone book, and I went online, and the Lord led me to a wonderful, beautiful Christian counselor here in town. And so I went to her for about two months every week. As we were going through things, the Holy Spirit brought out things even deeper that I didn't get on my own. And the last time I went to go see her, um, the Lord revealed just some intense lies that I had had about myself. And, um, and so, and I'm in the middle of really getting it out. And it was the end of the session. And she said, I'm really sorry, but there's a 10 year old boy and he is going to be, um, he's going to be coming. And so I have to, you know, minister to him. And I said, that's totally fine. I said, the Holy Spirit will complete the work. So the next day, I had a prayer walk. I loved to walk along the river and commune with God. And while I was there, the rest of the piece, God just downloaded that lie, exposed it, and set me free. And I felt. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. It's very important to continue to listening very intently to this, this story because I believe that this story is going to set some people free in the house today on your mindset of things that may be holding you back from your very own healing and deliverance yourself. So listen carefully and draw from it the faith you need to receive for yourself in Jesus' name. So go ahead and continue, Gloria. Okay. So when that happened at the river, I felt this shift in my body. I can't explain it. And I knew my thyroid was better. And so I was all excited because it was like August, and that's around the time that my doctor would want to check my thyroid um, every year. So I went to her, and I had it checked, and I go in for my appointment, and she says, this is amazing. She says, your thyroid is so much better. I'm going to reduce your dosage in half. Amen. Put our hands together for Jesus. So I took that and I said, I'm taking that, Lord, as your touch, as your healing, and I'm standing, and I'm going to continue to stand. I'm not giving up, and I'm not going to lay down and say, this is good enough. I'm going for the full package. And so what I really want to encourage people, too, is that healing isn't always instant. It's, this is not glamorous, but hang in there. And so that was like August. And I'm feeling really good. I didn't go back to the counselor. I actually emailed her said, man, I'm walking into this new freedom. Thank you for what you did for me and the Lord and all that. And then about that next spring, I felt all this setback in my life. You know, sometimes things are going really good, but then the Lord says, okay, I'm going to get something else out of you. And all these obstacles can come up. And so I was so frustrated. Like, I was praying and I was doing different things. And the Lord said, okay. Well, you did this, you know, you've done this, and you did the other thing. I want you to reach out, and someone else is going to minister to you. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know. Part of it doesn't like to bother anybody and all that. So I said, okay, God, I'm open. So the Lord brought me this gal in the Seattle area who's doing the Sozo, which is a prayer ministry out of Bethel Church in Reading. And I've never met this gal but um, she was ministering to my sister, and I started doing prayer ministry over the phone. And the Holy Spirit, through that prayer ministry, started revealing things that I, in a way deeper level, and I was just, like, amazed and cried and, and all that. And I was seeing him get me free. And towards the end of the summer, um, there was an experience that I had that I believe oftentimes help, or hinders a lot of Christians. And what my experience was, I grew up in a church that my parents love God, people love God, but you had to come down to the altar and get right. And your whole focus was on your sin consciousness, was God was always mad at you, you never really pleased him, you can never do enough. And so I was down to the altar, I'm 10 years old, and um, the thing is, is that I was just crying out to God because I would get mad. I was in public school, it wasn't cool to be a Christian then, 
and people were a lot really cruel. They were cruel to me. I was huge, and I was, um, and I would hate to see how mean kids were. So I'm down at the altar, and I'm saying, God, I'm trying not to sin, but I hate people sometimes, and I'm mad at them, and they hurt, and, and I don't like this, and I'm trying not to hate, and all of that. And I remember my pastor came up to me. He was a very loving man. And I said, I'm trying not to sin. I'm really trying not to sin. And he said to me something that in his heart he was trying to help me. But he said to me, um, you know what really helps me not sin? And I was like, oh, what? You know, I love my pastor. He said, well, I imagine that every time I sin, I've nailed Jesus to the cross again. And I've crucified him again. And that helps me not sin. So I don't know about you, but as a 10-year-old child, I looked up at him, and, I'm, and this is what the enemy spoke to me. And I didn't know it was the enemy. So he goes, you thought you were bad, Gloria? You are absolutely wicked. And he had no idea, right? I mean, I know he wouldn't. I mean, I, look, I forgave him and all that. Well, I remember that experience, and I remember thinking, I know that's not right somehow, but I, I couldn't put my finger on it. So I'm sharing it with this girl, Sozo. And she said, Gloria, that's really messed up. And I went, it is. And, and all of a sudden, though, the Holy Spirit showed me the lie I believed. Because all my life when something bad happened to me, I thought God was mad at me. I thought he hated me. And now I would never tell anybody else that. And I really didn't have that understanding up here, but I had it here. And if something bad happened to you, I wouldn't think God hated you, but I really had that. And I think a lot of times as Christians, there are different things that we've learned in our, the legalist experiences that have kept us from loving God, and we didn't know why. And so the Holy Spirit showed me that I, the root belief that I had started there, that God was um, angry at me for hurting his son over and over and over. And she said, that's not true because Jesus died once and no one can ever crucify him again. I said, like, wow. I said, I know that scripture, but I didn't know that I needed to know it like I know it now. I need to know it now. And she said, that's really messed up, Gloria. I love you. You got to get free of that religious legalistic thinking. She says, you need to get Joseph Prince destined to reign. And I said, oh, okay, well. Yeah, it's, it looks like a good book I've, like about authority. She goes, no, it's about receiving freedom from condemnation. you got to get that book. And I said, okay, I'm getting that book. I get that book, and as I read that book, and God starts revealing to me the condemnation that I was under, the Lord starts setting me free. And I remember this one day in particular, I felt another shift in my body, and it was August of the next year. And I said, I know. My thyroid's okay. I go to the doctor, and she takes my blood, and she says, I don't know what you've done, but you don't need thyroid anymore. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Wow, I, I really hope that all of you are understanding the significance of this testimony and what it means for you and for me. That what Gloria is explaining here is that it's God's desire not for us to only be physically healed but spiritually saved. And oftentimes God Almighty will uh, save us spiritually in tandem with our physical healing. That as you become more free, that your body will become free as well. That it goes one in one, hand in hand. And oftentimes we as Christians, we become so discouraged by the fact that, you know, when somebody lays our hand on us, we expect that the pain will instantly go or we re receive that, that, that healing instantly and the pain goes. And then next week that the pain kind of comes back and we surrender our healing back to the enemy and we let it go. But I, I want you to understand from this testimony is that God wants to take you on a journey because he doesn't want you to only be healed, but he wants you to be spiritually saved and set free from the lies of the enemy, the strong strongholds of the enemy.
enemy so that you can maintain that healing forever in Jesus name so I hope that you understand the importance of, of what Gloria has testified today that as God took her on the journey to set her mind free to set her spirit free that God Almighty supernaturally removed all of the sickness in her body and she's standing here a healthy woman before you today to testify to the glory of God amen amen so Gloria, we're so thankful for the testimony that you have shared with us today because we know that this is this testimony is setting some people free right now even as we speak. And that God Almighty, we believe, is going to continue to minister to you throughout the rest of this service. So just open up your heart and be ready to receive. You'll receive today from the message. Receive right now from the testimonies and God Almighty will continue to do it for you. So before we let you go, Gloria, we just want you to give us some advice to people who might be experiencing a sickness in their body right now or who is also going through a process and in their journey of healing I want you to know that God's will is to be healed he died on the cross for your sins and for your healing so faith can only begin where the will of God is known and John said I pray beloved that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So if there's any area that your soul, your mind, your will, and emotions, none of us get out of this life without being hurt, without being offended, without having the enemy, no matter how good of a Christian home you were raised in, that he will twist things so that you believe lies. None of us get out of there uh, without having those experiences. So whatever it is, God has freedom for you, spirit, soul, and physically.